Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to some more Brood War games from the ladder for your daily dose of Brood War. We've got Royal here in the top left hand corner to start us out versus Soul Key. And this is going to be a daily dose all about Soul Key. We're going to look at a bunch of his games. I'm just going to analyze them because he is incredibly, incredibly good right now. He might be able to take this season of ASL once again. No spoilers, of course, but I have my favorite for this season is Sharp. Uh, primarily because I met him, and when I met him, he seemed very, very determined to take it. And his performance in the wildcard qualifier, I think, was really, really impressive. So, I've got him as my favorite, but again, Soul Key could just take the whole thing. And that would kind of please my Zerg heart. I'd be very happy to see him take another win. He is one of my favorites. Uh, my favorite active player, I would say right now. My favorite uh, active player that I look up to the most. The one that I try to emulate. Uh, and has been showing some really aggressive play lately as well. So, I've really been liking some of his crazy play. Uh, we watched a series not too long ago where he was taking it to Protoss like I've never seen him do before. He's so well known as a macro player, but he was doing some crazy, crazy stuff, getting super aggro and showing another side of himself, perhaps uh, something that he will be bringing out in tournament, and that is exciting to see. He may be evolving even further. That's what we want to see, right? If you see someone win an ASL, you don't want to see them just stick with the what, what what got them there, you know? Just, okay, we're just going to keep playing the same game. Uh, now that we're a champion, we don't need to evolve or change or do anything different. No, you want to see them continue to grow, continue to push that envelope, and continue to practice and get better and, you know, grow that legacy. You know, get more than just the single victory. You want to see, see them get multiple ASL titles. And, oh, man, unfortunately, going to lose that drone. I'm not sure what he was doing there. It looked like he actually wanted to run in with the drone to maybe get inside and see if there was a gas or something, but he wasn't able to. And then he turned around and tried to run away and lost the drone, which is super painful at this early stage in the game. And the Marine has crossed the map here. He's going to be uh, heading back home now as he sees that uh, you know there could be lings popping out. The pool is done. There's actually not lings at all being popped here, so... There was a potential for maybe getting some amount of damage, but eh, the Marine is a little bit hurt. You know, a few, uh, just one pair of links going to pump out here. So I guess it's the right call to move the uh, Marine back home. And we're going to have a second barracks coming up here. A gas going to start as well. It's all looking like a two racks play here on Dark Origin for Royal. And yeah, we're really going to keep this SCV alive for quite some time. There's only two links chasing it, so it is pretty hard to track down and kill the one SCV. Not as hard as killing a probe because this never heals, but it's got a lot of health. It's still very annoying to try and pick that off. We're going to lose a Ling as well. Ouch. Soul Key is showing his belly here a little bit. I think mean, he's got some soft spots that he's not absolutely perfect as we like to think of him. Fire here on the way. Uh, just gonna go ahead and go to hatch Muta, it looks like. Maybe get into a third hatch over here. I'm not 100% sure. Where are all the drones right now? Got some more links out on the field, but the SCV has managed to slip by. And this SCV is gonna be able to go around and get a really nice scout here, it looks like. Yeah, just pure Ling popping out right now. We are very light on the drone number here. He is, I think, going to be looking to crush that uh, Marine Medic move out. The the uh, the two racks Marine Medic move out. And we've actually seen this really, really recently. Who was that, actually? Was that the Soul Key as well? Who uh, was crushing two... two no, that was Jadong that crushed a two racks move out. Um, I believe that was by Leda. Uh, that's what's popping into my head right now. And look at this. He lifts off the barracks. And watch this. Right as the uh, Marines start to move out, the links come in from all sides. A beautiful surround here. Everything gets absolutely crushed. And our game number one taken home by Soul Key. A beautiful 
little z zergling timing look at that he's only got the bare minimum number of drones back at home pumping out lings and with those two overlords coming you can see he's just about supply blocked right here this is all intentional pumping out as many lings as possible usually this would be drones right you would go up to 25 workers and absolutely saturate this and then pop two overlords and try to build mutas afterwards while of course building sunken colonies here at the front if there is that two rex move up but he completely blindsides royal here crushes that attack i gotta try this sometimes guys because i get hit with that two rex timing so so often and it really uh, puts you behind in a lot of ways um and the terran players do it pretty darn blind it's not really like they're being super cautious about it they just suck they just kind of move out. They just kind of go. They know that it's a good timing, that they're going to try and force those sunken colonies. And a lot of Terran players are kind of haphazard, kind of um, lackadaisical in the, their approach uh, to this 2-Rex move out. And you can see here, Royal, he wasn't totally aware of what was going on. He did not wait for a scan. Let's take a look at where his scanners were right as he was moving out here. Look at that. He also... Guys, this is so common, actually. We just covered this in a previous video. I think that might have been yesterday or the day before. Look at that. One scanner. He made one scanner as he was moving out. So if he waits just a few more seconds, lets this finish and scans the natural, he can see exactly what's happening here. And he just sits back behind the wall and, you know... Sulky has no drones. He's got nothing. He has absolutely nothing. But he saw the four lings out here. He's like, oh, that's probably all the all the lings you have. Let me just go ahead and push, force those sunken colonies. He's got his engineering bay on the way. I'll get the scan out here a little bit later so that I can pump a few extra SCVs. And man, oh man, did he ever pay for it. Look at how hot, far ahead he is in worker count right now. He's got... 12 13 extra workers here but just not able to bring them to bear not able to get into that mid game where those workers would really matter the lane counterattack comes totally wipes him out and we're gonna jump into game number two well here we are in game number two we've got prime aka hbq here in the top center of the map oops how did I get rid of that? Oh, there we go. All right, we've got the map. Um, HBQ. I don't know who he is. I don't really know too much about him, but I uh, saw that this game was recommended by Dude Nerd. Shout out to him from Seawall.gg, and we uh, we're gonna check it out. It's um, probably gonna be a pretty decent game here. Uh, some of these ladder Terrans can put out some really strong games, despite. You no, know, going up against the ASL champion here. We might be, we still might be able to learn something. We still might be able to see something cool here. Maybe we can see Soul Key's style on a Terran player. That would be fun to watch. It's rare. It's really, really rare in this matchup to see a Zerg player's style on a Terran, right? Like, we can watch it all day long. It's not really a surprise when you see a Protoss player who's better than his opponent's style on a a Terran player for instance right like that type of stuff happens all the time because there's so much wiggle room in that matchup especially once you've got a little bit of a lead uh you could just do so much you can do so many different things and still be pretty certain of victory uh in this matchup not so much man not so much um the Terran is very sturdy and there are so many moments where you could just die if you don't have the right units, the right composition, uh, you know, the, the the defiler in the right place at the right time. An s rank Terran player like HBQ can kill you at almost any moment. You have to be on top of your game and you can't be messing around, styling on them um, too much, too, too much. It's, it's probably little things are okay, but, you know, you're not going to... There's no equivalent, I would... Like, what I'm trying to say is there's no equivalent to, for example, scouts in PVT for the ZVT matchup. I just don't think that's 
uh, a real thing. We did go for an early pool here. We're going to put on that pressure. This is not a great build, though. And especially not against something like this. Unless we don't close this off. All right. We are going to put some SCVs in there. That's good. The SCVs in the way is absolutely critical. I'm going to go ahead and repair that SCV. But unfortunately, that does go down. Another SCV does fall. Unfortunately, though, these links are actually going to get in here. That's kind of ridiculous. I can't believe he's got the links in after pulling that many SCVs. Still able to target all of those down. And just not quite there with the repair um, that he needed. HBQ losing out on, you know, quite a few SCVs going down. And this is going to be working out pretty well for Solki here. I think he's got a pretty sizable advantage at this point. You don't want to count him out. You know, things can still go wrong for Solki here. But this is pretty darn strong. Now, if there was going to be a game where Solki was going to style on a Terran player, I think it might be this game, guys. Just like we were talking about. But uh, hold on. You know, it's not totally the end of the world here. We did go for the early pool. What did we lose? Three SCVs, I guess. And two Marines. Three Marines. Something like that. That's a lot of damage. Hmm... I'm not sure what to say here, guys. I think that Solki is in a pretty decent lead despite the, you know, worker count being very, very even here. We've got Metabolic Boost. We've got Lair on the way. We have full information about, you know, what's coming out of the natural here. You can still see that, you know, he's still producing those Marines and he's sending some out, but he's not going too far from the uh, natural here. Lings are chasing down this SCV and they... Should be able to pick it off soon. Uh, two Rax play is going to come out of HBQ. I might call him Prime. I like Prime a little bit better. That's a good name. Should stick with that. Um, Prime here, he's going to go for that two Rax play. And I hope that he makes a uh, Comsat and uses it before he moves out. That would be... That would be good. Well, he's not actually going to do that. He's going to start to move out with a few of these Marines. It's kind of poking here. He does get one Ling. And are we going to see a bunch of Lings being produced here? No. Soul Key, this time, is just playing standard. There's no need to get funky here. There's no need to get, you know, crazy in this game. All we need to do is play our standard play style. And we should be able to take a win here over Prime, who's been slowed down here in the early game. He is going to be pumping out some medics, it looks like. Medics are going to be popping out, and the moment the medics are out, we're going to be able to move across the map. But the spire is done, so four meters on the way, soon to be six. Lings are going to try to counterattack, but this is just really to buy time. Buying that time is super important right now. Soul Key does not want to make sunken colonies here if he can help it, and it looks like he can. He can help it, he is going to prevent uh, Prime from moving across the map, and he will get his third base down. With full mutal production on the way here. No upgrade thus far. We'll probably see that upgrade popping in the production tab here soon. As they do want to get probably plus one attack for Soul Key. It just makes your Muta Clump that much scarier. Especially when you dive in uh, and pick off turrets and that type of thing. You can just dispatch them so much faster. So there it is. Plus one is on the way here. Plus one as well coming up for Prime. Good pick off so far. We go for an SCV here. Doesn't have the full seven, only six right now. One of those mutas is a little bit damaged. So, waiting on that seven stack, and now we're up to eight. So, eight is a great number for doing something like a dive. You want to come around this side, start to hit these turrets, and then dive through. It can be really, really powerful with eight mutas because even if you lose one, you can still. A one shot the SCVs and you're likely to lose one as you're flying through so having that extra to make sure that the one shot can still be there is just really really strong in terms of uh, you know harassment and uh, doing that first slide through that first swipe at the SCVs so we'll see if he wants to do that so far he's just targeting down a lot of these Marines focusing primarily on them and you can kind of tell the game plan from Zerg based upon what they're going for, right? What they're attacking. Now, 
if you're a player who wants to go for a Hydralisk uh, Lurker play, you want to switch into Lurker and kind of defend at all your bases, uh, that way you're much more likely to go for SCV kills. So I'm going to dive in here. I'll get the uh, fab here. Wow. Three mutas. Very, very low. But I didn't hear any of them die. Um, going after those turrets. Opening up this position. Uh, making these supply depots much more accessible here. He's going to get the bounce. The glaives going. Trying to pick off that turret, actually, with the glaives. There you go. He gets the turret. I'm going to pick off a few more marines here. And since he's primarily going for marines and fighting here... It makes me believe that he's got something else aside from just the standard play on his mind. He is going for a Hydralis Den. And maybe a Queen's Nest is going to follow up here shortly. But usually when they go for a, a, a fight like this, killing off Marines over and over and over again, it's for something like a Mutalisk all-in or a Hydra, like a Lurker all-in, uh, following up these, Hydra, or these Mutas or like a Guardian all-in, something like that, where you're actually going to try and break the Terran. Uh, if you just want to harass their economy, if you just come in and harass their economy, that's more of a play where you're like, I'm going for a long-term play. I'm just going to eventually get in to Lurker. I'm eventually going to have all the defenses necessary, and I will just be perfectly safe on my side of the map for any sort of counterattack because the Marine Medic is going to continue to build while you're killing those SCVs. So you have to have a safety net for yourself uh, to fall back on once the Mutalis pressure is no longer there and once that Marine Medic ball is super, super big. So we're going to dive in here once again, start to kill off some more turrets. I, I like the patience of Soul Key. He takes so much time uh, to slowly build up to this, right? He hasn't just diving. He's not just diving in over and over and over and over again uh, Right from the start here. He's just slowly picking away at the Marines getting an SCV here getting an SCV there getting a supply depot You know picking off a couple of Marines again getting an SCV again You know getting a couple of turrets and then slowly slowly opening up the position as it continues to reinforce and now he's here with some Hydras and Lurkers uh, Lurker upgrade being finished. Hive is on the way, and we've got that evolution chamber. So it is going to be a normal play, uh, contrary to what I was thinking. He is going to try and play out a normal game here. Um, and he will be well defended back at home. He's just going to keep picking away at the SCVs here in the natural, getting some more kills here. Now that he's got Lurkers on the way, he's got nine Lurkers coming up here. He has no more fear of the Marine Medic on the map. So, hell, go ahead. You know, go out on the map here, Marine Medic. I'm just going to stay here, kill every single SCV that I can. And back at home, I will have all my Lurkers set up and prepared for the eventual counterattack. So, you know, I really like this spot here for Solki. He's done a great job thus far. He's going to come back in once again. And really, there's nothing Prime can do with that Marine Medic Force. It, it's an empty threat here at this point. This Marine Medic Force can do nothing against what Solki has put together at this point. Uh, you know, more medics are going to come up here. It doesn't matter. We've got a Sunken now coming in. That's going to tank a lot of damage. And um, it's going to take priority over the Lurkers as well in the fight. So that's going to be very annoying to deal with. He'll have to target down Lurkers if he wants to try and break a position. But I don't think he can necessarily even do that. With six Lurkers here, Prime is looking... Pretty darn doomed, man. He's lost a lot of SCVs. He's down to just 36. He's now finally brought together enough Marines to really hold this area. And he has a science vessel. So, Sulky is just going to go ahead and uh, amble back home here with his Munas. Just hang out. Wait for any sort of a drop play to come in. Because he will be ready to crush that. Uh, that's really the only thing that can go wrong for Sulky at this point. He still does need to eventually get into a fourth base. Um, he may be thinking of going for Hydra Lurker, though. It's kind of looking like... Or Hy Hydra uh, Defiler, excuse me. Kind of looking like that right now. He doesn't have the greatest drone saturation, but we're getting there, right? We just need a few more drones as we pump out these Defilers, as we get into these Lurkers. Uh, the first few Radiates are just coming up here, uh, and they're not going to do barely anything to get rid of this massive lurker count that we've got we've even got the nidus ready to go so 
uh, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, making sure he's got everything. He's not stacking the lurkers or doing anything like that, uh, which is a little bit safer against the continuous uh, irradiate play. But here, he does have the stack. Okay, he does have a stack over here, so you can't really break through there. I'm surprised he didn't stack here as well, but it is kind of dangerous. Okay, he's going to stack there. He's going to start to stack these up. Make sure that he can't get, you know, multiple irradiates at, a, at the same time. Uh, it is a little dangerous though, right? If he goes for a big mass of fire bats and suddenly hits you with a ton of fire bats, it could get kind of messy. I'm gonna run away with some of these lurkers. Unfortunately, they are going to get irradiated regardless. That's a little bit frustrating for Soul Key. He doesn't have Scourge uh, in position. I guess these Scourge were in position, but he didn't move them to actually deal with that. So. This is a hard part of the the game. This is the this is the tough part of uh, Zerg versus Terran. Like, yes, we've done very very well up to this point. Yeah, we you know we cleaned up everything really nicely. We defended everything really nicely. But now we have to just sit here and hold whatever Terran throws at us. Coming through, going to kill a few SCVs. This is not a play that you often see Zerg players uh, pull out, but. Look at this, Soul Key actually gonna get a lot of damage here. Taking off quite a few SCVs. He's gonna have to eat uh, one or two irradiates, unfortunately, but he's already kind of pre-split everything, so he's gonna do a good job of uh, getting that out of the stack and come back in to do some more damage. He's killing a lot of SCVs here, man. Kind of a crazy number of SCVs. Really nice splitting once again, beautifully done. Just gonna send that Mila in to die and might come back in for some more damage here uh, on the backside. He's also getting a good view of actually what's coming out uh, for Prime. Prime's actually going into double uh, factory, but will he be able to afford it? He is losing so many SCVs here. Oh my goodness, a huge, huge eraser trick here, dealing so much damage at the third base. That killed like 10 SCVs. That totally equalized. Uh, all of the damage that was done by these mutas over here uh, just in those last few moments. He did so much damage to this mineral line. Huge amount of drones just went down and that's going to take some time for Soul Key to really, you know, resaturate those locations. It's very, very painful to deal with. Um, going to try to come out here. Oh, a great snipe on the Defiler as well. Prime really showing some good skills here. After the kind of shaky opener that he had against Soul Key, which is understandable, obviously. You're playing against the ASL champion. Um, it's understandable that you might be a little bit shaky, but... Uh, he's showing some good skill here in this next stage of the game, in this kind of middle part of the game. But again, uh, as I've said before, this is the part that is the hardest for Zerg. It's the easiest for Terran. You're just kind of sitting back. Uh, waiting for the Zerg player to come out. You can do drops. You can just keep constantly irradiate. Be really, really annoying. Trying to come through and actually pick off some tanks. Getting these tanks would be massive. It would be so, so big. He's actually investing a lot into this. He's got two factory tank production rolling right now. And he's trying to get into plus one. So these tanks are going to come out. Maybe set up on the high ground. Maybe come all the way over here. But that's a little bit scary. You don't want to put your tanks in too this, you know, precarious a situation here. Oh my god, he's just going to fly right over those. That is pretty funny. The Mute is just flying over a whole load of tanks. They could have definitely picked those off, but he is just going to fly on by there. Lurker's going to come out and start to set up here at the front. The tanks are ready. First Plague goes down. Deals quite a bit of damage to these two science vessels and it gets rid of a lot of that medic energy. We've resaturated, but the tank count is starting to grow here. The only thing I don't like is how stacked these tanks are right now. You really want to spread them out, get a big spread of tanks so that it's not easy for them to attack in any one location. Good target fire there by Prime. He's going to have to unseize these tanks, but a great plague. A really great plague on all those tanks. That's the other part uh, that's bad. If you are going to be stacking up your tanks, you're going to end up getting really great plagues. Juicy plagues on all the tanks at the same time. It's a real pain here for Prime. He's going to have to back away. These four tanks, I hope he sends these back or at least send some SCVs to repair these up. If he doesn't, these are going to go down 
uh, pretty much for free here, I would say. They're gonna be so, so low on that HP that it's gonna be nearly free. Oh God. Coming forward here with a lot of lurkers and lings. Those lings and lurkers gonna jump right on top of these low HP tanks. Low HP tanks gonna go down in the blink of an eye here. Oh man, so much destruction here as Zoliki shoves Prime back. This is an ASL champion level player, guys. Playing Hydralis Defiler. Look at how much uh, just units raw power he has on the map right now for three gas. He's got his fourth though. And when that fourth comes online, you know his pushes are just going to be that much stronger, that much scarier. He's going to be able to grab multiple bases around the map as well. Now that he's opened up the center, dropping Dark Storm and running forward here right on top of this. This is so scary. All of the Marines and Medics just vaporized to the Lurker Spines and Marines are going to be heading back away from this. Yeah, we're just going to get completely overwhelmed here. Prime, no match for the King. Soul Key just overwhelming everything. He's going to run forward with another group of Marines, but his tank number is so low that it makes me really wonder if Prime had just stayed a little bit more conservative with his tanks. You know, wait for a higher count and just hold this high ground right here with all the tanks. You know, maybe imagine if he had, you know, five more tanks with this little army right here. He could have had like 10 tanks holding this high ground. Oh God, he's going to stack up so much again. So, so stacked right here. Are we going to get a big plague? No, Dark Swarm on that high ground. Going to shove everything back, killing off even more tanks here. And as the tank count gets reset over and over again, this army is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And it's just Soul Key becoming absolutely monstrous on the map. Also, we've forgotten our infantry armor upgrades. That is a real pain here. What have we got? 2-1. No melee attack, but that's fine. It's primarily just uh, Hydralisk, Defiler. The Lings are just there as fodder and to eat for the uh, Defilers. They're just there for food. So not a big deal that he doesn't have the Ling upgrades here. And he's just shoving forward, man. With that fourth gas now online, Prime is going to be hard pressed to hold back this behemoth that's coming forward here. More lurkers going to be set up right in front of these tanks. And there's just not the number. The tank number is just not high enough to, sh to deny a push like this. The Hydralists are going to keep shoving forward. The lurkers are going to keep shoving forward. You need to have that like eight, 10 tank count where the Hydras and Lurkers, even under Dark Swarm, will just vaporize if they're not burrowed yet. But unfortunately, just never hit that count because he threw his tanks away a little bit earlier uh, by having them all stacked up and in, in a really aggressive position in a low number. Really unfortunate uh, losses from Prime. And, you know, he showed some great promise in this game, but I think that Solki really did dominate him here and he's shoving him all the way back onto his own low ground he's setting up lurkers now right in the face of prime and there's nothing you can do with just tanks here shelling of course the vessels can get some work done but it takes time and it's time that he just does not have meanwhile this base over here up at the 12 o'clock is gonna get overwhelmed by hydralisks and lings it's so impressive so what Sulky has really been able to do here with the number of units that he's been able to produce is just overwhelming to watch. Absolutely crazy. 145. He's 45 supply ahead right now. That is so impressive. Let's take a look. Oh, I think I just restarted it here. Let's go all the way to the end of this replay here and just take a look at how many hatcheries he was producing off of. So look at that. He had three macro hatches in the main and of course, this one and this one over here. And he was just blasting out units. Oh, we can see there was some sort of drop over here. Or maybe a, a, an attack over towards this base. One last desperate measure from Prime to try and claw his way back in this game. But it looks like it was not enough. Didn't even manage to get into that base or kill any drones at all. The only thing that really went great for Prime was that one solo, the singular eraser trick that wiped out this mineral line that one time 
that is it, man. Okay, it wasn't a drop. Looks like it was just a bunch of naked Marines that happened to walk down here into the third base, uh, you know, while Soul Key was busy in other areas. And there it is. It just gets completely wiped out. So nothing really missed there. Prime gets taken down by Soul Key. And we're going to jump into another game here, guys. We've, yes, that's right. We've got another one here. Let's jump right in. All right, we've got Soul Key in the bottom left. Paralyze in the bottom right. A Protoss versus Zerg this time. And, and I am just blown away at the skill displayed by Soul Key recently. Not just in this series, but in the, all the previous series that we've watched. And I'm not going to change my prediction for the ASL, but man, I think that Soul Key will be in the finals this season for sure. He is just killing it, dude. He is so, so strong right now. That patience, the poise. I wish I could catch a little bit of that genius, that lightning in a bottle that makes Sulky so great. His ability and confidence in his ability is so impressive. And just see how he micros his mutas throughout the game. He has really no mistakes with his mutalists at all. Uh, and Mutalist, I mean, guys, you watch my stream, you'll see well, there are plenty of mistakes that can be made. There's so many different uh, things that can go wrong with Mutas. They're so finicky when it comes to actually attacking. Uh, if you watch any Zerg player, really, if you're going to watch me, you're going to watch Herbmon or anyone else who's trying to play at a high level, even someone like Hawk or... Um, any other Zerg players who... Uh, I'm not saying that I'm high, high level, by the way, but any Zerg players uh, who play on the ladder are going to have a big struggle. Oh my god, he got it? What? Oh man, no way. Well, this is the second game we've watched where Sulky lost his early drone, though. So maybe um, a little bit lackluster with the early drone, but I don't know. I think he just poked the bear here uh, uh paralyzed you just killed sulky's first drone are you sure you want to do that you sure you want to get him mad bro you might uh you might regret that later i think he's gonna be pretty happy though after killing off one early drone feels like he's got the edge already that's like what one ninth of the economy like 10 11 percent of the economy 12 percent of the economy was killed um, with that first drone going down, pretty brutal, man. Pretty darn rough uh, for my boy Soul Key. Look at this. He's only got six drones in the main. And he's building gas right now. Wow. I don't know if he can even afford anything like this. Building Lings. He's building four Lings right now. Kind of has to because there is this... Uh, this gateway. Okay, I'll change off of, um, of Brown here. I don't know why Brown is so popular... Uh, for the computer, just choosing brown all the time. Seems like there's an inordinate amount of brown um, in these replays. But again, brown Zerg is not as good as red Zerg. Or not, <laughs> brown Protoss not as good as red Protoss. So we're going to go with red Protoss here. And looks like he's pulled off of that gas. Yeah, I thought he wouldn't be able to afford to actually mine gas at this point. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Like, look, he can't even afford to make a lair. Uh, I mean, he's not even making us speed. What? What am I seeing right now? This is very confusing. Okay, there's the lair. Um, the gas seemed really early, guys. It seemed really early. I think that there might have been a mistake here, honestly. Maybe Sulky thrown off by that first drone kill. Uh, it can happen, guys. A lot of people on the ladder um, will just go like Ling all in or something. If they lose an early drone like that, or if they lose an early overlord, same sort of thing. It's like, it hurts so bad. It's so painful, and it's it's kind of embarrassing. You know that you're going to be behind for the entire rest of the game. So, a lot of players will just be like, you know what, screw it. Let's just gamble. Let's just roll the dice, see if we can get a quick win here. Yeah, get me out of this game, man. And they'll just throw a bunch of lings in, but... Um, yeah, not soul key here. He's, uh, he's doing something a little funky. He went for that lair. 
Uh, the gas was crazy early, and then it didn't get used. The gas uh, that was built up didn't get used for a long time because he didn't have money to use it. So, <laughs> we're going to build drones now, but we actually need to build lings because the zealots are coming. It's just not a good feeling, man. I'm I'm not feeling Solki's position here right now. He's uh, he's in a kind of a hurt spot right now. And seeing inside the main, we are going to have that uh, Stargate here. So he's going to bail out with the Overlords, try to hide him on the map until this uh, Spire can get out and eventually produce some, some of those Scourge to hopefully deal with that. Now he's going to get around behind the Zealots here. And with a pretty good surround, he might be able to clear this pretty decently well. Now, if uh, Paralyze is really paying attention here, he should target the Lings behind himself and then clear a path so that he can block the ramp. But you know what? He didn't do a great job of that. And he kind of just traded out. It's not the worst trade in the world, but you know, definitely could have been a lot better. And now the Zealots are... Uh, one Zealot going to run behind the Minerals. It's just pure, purely annoying. Um, two more Zealots going to run into the natural. Does he have Lings on the way? He does, but not a lot. Um, this could be really bad for Sulky, actually. Man, he's really losing a lot right now. Oh, I, I, I don't like this at all. This is so painful. He's going to start to lose drones here, no doubt. First drone probably going to go down. Nice pullback. Nice pullback. Really, really good there. Ah, one drone does go down. Pretty frustrating stuff. The Zealot running here into the main. Uh, of course, they're going to start to deal damage. This is where I really start to fall apart, guys. Uh, I'll be honest with you. This is where things really start to fall apart for me is when there's just zealots running in everywhere, being super duper annoying, killing off drones, and then there's Corsairs as well. Oh, he almost got that. Ooh, really, really close. But you can see he's got a massive lead in workers. And Sulky has just been panicking building lings and drones trying to stay in this game. Um, he lost uh, an overlord, maybe two. One overlord has gone down. The uh, Scourge are going to look for that Corsair. Good job hiding the overlords out on the map. Uh, something I don't actually do enough. I think I am I should start to do that more. Is just run the overlords away and try to hide them in random spots. So that the Corsairs can't just get easy kills uh, before my Scourge are out. But, you know, he's not going to lose too many. It's pretty darn good. I'm going to keep a lot of these overlords alive. Only lost one, so he can get into his six hatch production. And get a lot of drones out here. It's going to go into four meters. I doubt he'll go any further than that. He does have armor on the way, though. And a second gas. Maybe we're going to go full muta here. Okay, he is building a lot of mutas and scourge. Bit of ogres are going to come out here in this game. It is a great way to get back into games where you feel like you're kind of too far behind. You feel like you're, you know, in a bit of a rough spot. You're not sure how you can possibly bring it back with just pure, you know, Hydralisk play. Um, sometimes just catching the Corsairs and going in for an all-in could be the right call, the key to victory. Now he's going to come out. Start to hit these Zealots. Zealots are going to go down to the Mutas here pretty quickly. What the Scourge kind of zoning out the Corsairs. A good split does come down for Paralyzed. Paralyzed is going to be able to get you know, the majority of these Zealots home. I guess two of the Zealots will make it home. Ooh, the Scourge not connecting at all. So I think we'll have to switch out of this play. The six Mutas here, I mean, it was a good gambit, but I guess we're not going to be able to Ogre Zerg him here. We needed to connect a bunch of Scourge on these Corsairs and then, you know, come in with the big swell of Mutas, like eight, ten Mutas to actually wipe out the main base. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. We didn't even see extra cannons made or anything, which is something you'd love to have the Protoss do. Like, panic, throw down two or three cannons. You know, a cannon here, a cannon here, maybe two in the main. Um, a lot of Protoss players will do that just when they see the Scourge, but you know, Paralyzed holding strong here. He's not uh, flinching right now, and Scourge are going to come in, try to make some connections, but we do have that Templar now. Ooh, Ling's trying to get up here. They wanted to go to work on that Nexus, but the Zealots are in front. Oh, he goes after the Templar. He does get the Templar. That's a big snipe here. That's going to mean that these uh, 
Mutas and Scourge can actually come in and do a lot. Oh man, he only gets one course there, but another wave of Scourge coming in. Just going after these uh, Corsairs. He gets another two Corsairs. Really, really good here. Down to just five. Five Corsairs remain. That's still enough to shove back the Mutas. Uh, you will not win that fight, but maybe he can come in and snipe a Templar and then overwhelm this position with Hydra. It looks like that's the plan. He's building a lot of Hydra right now. He really does want to get something done here. He doesn't have range, though. Range, super important upgrade, even against, even fighting against Zealots. You know, you want your Hydras in the back line to be fighting at the, or fighting with the Zealots as well as the ones at the front line. Um, so really important that he gets that going here pretty soon. Uh, but at, at least before, oh, he dives in. He does dive in. He dives in. He goes for one Templar. He gets one. One Templar is all he's going to get, though. And there's still one Templar remaining. Scourge coming from the back. This is a really tense situation. If Soul Key gets some good Scourge connections and he dives on this Templar, it's an open question whether he can break through with Hydras or not. Uh, rotating around here towards the natural. Another round of Hydras comes out. We're staking, sticking on 42 workers, but we are getting another base here over in that top. Oh, he's going for the Templar, Templar. Oh, he gets two Templar, and that opens up this position. Oh, man, he's going to be able to get in here. This is really bad for Paralyzed right now. He's going to kill both the cannons really, really fast. The Zealots are coming from behind, but if he runs in, he could use the SimCity against his opponent, but look at this storm. Massive storm comes down. The Templar will die. But just with that storm alone, it looks like he can clear everything up. Three Hydras are going to run into the main, maybe kill off a few extra probes. But two cannons are there, so they can't really do too much. And Paralyze is going to stabilize. Maybe running back here would have been better. Instead of running up into the main, run back here and start killing probes. That might have been a better call, but hey, it is what it is. It's kind of a weird situation. You don't really see Hydras running by into, into uh, Protoss bases very often. That's not really a thing. So, wasn't prepared for that. We've got plus one here. But plus one, one is done for Protoss. And we haven't started plus two yet. Oh, that's really bad. We need plus two to be started here. We're going to fall so far behind in upgrades if we don't get that rolling. Hydra's fighting here against the Zealot Dragoon pretty well because there are no storms. He's able to get in here, but that's still four cannons. And there's Dragoons on the backside that are going to be harassing while he's trying to break through this. He's going after the Forge. If he can get the Forge, he can slow down the upgrades and give himself a chance here. Oh, he's not going to get it. He's got 15 HP on that. Kill the Forge for the love of God. Kill the Forge. Please, Sulky, get that forge. Oh my gosh, he started plus two, but he's not killing the forge. There it is, he finally does pick it off. So he gets rid of that very important forge and stops the upgrades from continuing to progress here. Are we gonna make another forge somewhere in the main or will it be Paralyzed who starts to fall behind in the upgrades? Running up on this high ground, he's gonna dive on top of the cannons that was quite a few cannons but they were not right on top of the ramp oh killing off two templar here is beautiful getting those two templar on the retreat sulky making moves in this game man it is so hard to break open a protoss on three bases especially this map that is the one ramp that can get into the third and that is the one ramp the one bridge here that can come down towards your you're natural. So there's so little surface area to actually defend. It's kind of silly. I'm going to throw down a storm on this ramp. Oh, yeah. You're going to regret going up that ramp, man. That is not a good place to attack into. Solki going to fall back. Seven mutas. This is something I don't do enough, but Solki is going to pull it out and show us why it's so good here. Uh, he's killed a lot of the Corsairs, it seems like. I don't actually know when they went down. Maybe I'll picture and picture that because it seems like they fell maybe during one of those fights but uh the fact that those are all dead now means that he can quickly switch into mutas and snipe a bunch of templar and there's really nothing that paralyze can do about it he's got a lot of cannons here though he's gonna fall back to those very nice save here by paralyze oh shuttle wants to go towards the main base but he's just not gonna allow that to happen five 
Uh, Mutas is the correct number to one-shot probes. So he's trying to do that right now. He's going to get the shuttle, it looks like. That shuttle is very important that he picks that off. Oh, no. He miss, miss. Oh, man. Misclick there. And now I think the shuttle can actually get in. No, another Muta comes out. No, two Mutas, in fact. He's going to pop out here. Deny that shuttle from dropping a bunch of zealots inside the main, which can be very, very annoying. Fourth base is up now. We don't have that fourth gas online, but this has been a really intense game, guys. I love to see it. Soul Key putting Paralyze to the test in this game. He's really pushing him to his limits, forcing him into all kinds of precarious situations, and Paralyze, for what it's worth, has done a great job. He's really held on here in this game, and now he's got to hold these Mutas. Mutas are flying in, killing off more and more probes here. Looks like a Zealot counterattack going to make its way across the map. That'll be very annoying because we don't have anything up there in the top left. And Sulky, you know, he thought he had a kind of a contain over here, but he really didn't have the position that he needed to stop Zealots from getting out. And as soon as this comes in, I think Sulky is going to be punching himself in the head right now when he sees this. Because he really should not have allowed that to happen. And it's probably going to end the game here for Soul Key. He needed that fourth base so bad. He's not going into something like a hive. You know, he's not got some huge advantage here. He does have, you know, 2-0 against the 1-1. Because we never made... Oh, we did make the... We, we made the... Um, we did remake the forges. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have them ready yet. The... Uh, Templar gets picked off. There's another two Templar coming down here. He's going to try and snipe this. If he can get all the Templar right here, right now, he might be able to take this fight. Oh, he forces the storms, the self storms there. Another Templar going to make its way down here. One last storm and lands on the middle of the Hydras. Paralyze going to come around from all sides. Paralyze completely encircling this army. All the Hydras are going to go down. The reinforcements have to take the long way around to uh, reinforce this position. I wish he would have just ran up on this ramp, start hitting these cannons and stuff, but he doesn't. Instead, he runs all the way around and is too late to do anything to, uh, you know, reinforce this attack. Sulky is on the ropes right now, more than he's been in any of the games thus far. He is super duper on the ropes here. He is in so much trouble. A few more Hydras are going to pop up, but the Zealot counterattack still has to be dealt with. Could just target down this hatchery. If he gets a hatchery right now, this is something that a lot of good Protoss players will do, is just target a hatchery at the edge of the base, and it just kills so much of your production. It's like killing, you know, two gateways uh, in the Protoss base. But it's just, it really hampers you a lot. He's gonna try and run in here. Wow, we're not getting any storms against this, and the Hydras are fighting pretty well for themselves. Looks like two storms do finally come down. The Hydra army will evaporate, but he did trade pretty well. I just, I don't see it, guys. I think that Solki might be out of this one. The ASL champion getting taken down by Paralyze, who is like a ACS player. I don't think he's ever been in the ASL. Now, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. I'm sure some of you will down in the comments below. I'm not a, a someone who knows really well about Paralyze. Um, we've done a few games of his on the channel, but... He's putting up a great showing for himself here in this game. He's handled all of the craziness. He's handled all of the harassment from Sulky. He's handled the Muta play. Uh, multiple Muta switches. We're going to have another Muta switch here. He's going to pop a bunch of Mutas and try to snipe that last Templar so that his Hydras can actually win this fight. But it's already too late. The Hydras are trapped against the wall. The Hydras explode here. With the Templar going to be taken out at the end of this battle. Certainly not enough to win the fight. GG is called. Paralyze going to take this one home. Super impressive play here by Paralyze. Handling everything brilliantly. Soul Key really going on the aggressive this game. And he never built Lurker. He never transitioned into a late game. He just wanted to keep hitting him with Mutas. Uh, big groups of Mutas. Sniping Templar and Hydra's trying to take the win. But the run by here to the top left i think was the killing blow just so unfortunate sulky had his hydras like right here or something maybe right here 
rather than right here, which is where they needed to be, or uh, even better, right here, because you can still run through this way and go all the way around. If you have your Hydras, you know, spread out right along here, then the Protoss, you know, they cannot slip out Zealots like that without you knowing, but when they get out on the map, they get up to this top left-hand base. This is uh, prime real estate here for the Zerg player because that is so far away from the Protoss. That's the base that you want to take, but it's also the most difficult to defend, right? So far away from the front line where you're sending all of your army to fight at the Protoss base. Uh, sending something to reinforce this to save this base is nearly impossible. And that's what we saw there. Impossible to hold that base. Impossible to save that. I know that Solki is bashing himself uh, for making such a mistake. But it is what it is. This was a crazy, crazy final game, guys. Really enjoyed it. Paralyze. Looking forward to more games from him. Solki has been looking good in this series did get taken out by paralyzed in this last one but i'm hoping for him to be in the finals of this season of the asl guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you tomorrow